when you run an atmospheric code like Modtran, which is kind of the atmospheric equivalent of hydrolyte, it looks totally different in, in how they do things. And all the radiative transfer stuff is just totally different than what goes on in hydrolyte or in a Monte Carlo code under the water. And the reason is because the IOPs in the atmosphere are generally determined by particular molecules of gas, which are small molecules, oxygen, ozone, you know, NO2, et cetera. And those have very, very specific absorption lines. And so those guys have to have a whole different way of solving the radiative transfer equation. Otherwise, they would have to run their equivalent of hydrolyte at like a tenth of a nanometer resolution in order to really describe their IOPs. So it's just a warning that some people ask me, well, like, why don't you just, like, use hydrolyte for the atmosphere and have a coupled model? And the reason is that the IOPs between the atmosphere and the ocean are so vastly different that I, could, I, I can't just take the ocean hydrolyte here and plug in some atmospheric IOPs at the midpoint and do my business. It is a completely different way of doing radiative transfer and they, they look like almost nothing like each other. And so consequently the atmospheric people don't talk to the ocean people and you know they're two different worlds with two different notations and two different terminologies and two different sets of radiative transfer code and on and on and on. And occasionally you'll see in the atmospheric paper somebody says we did a line by line calculation of whatever. Line by line means they're doing an extremely high resolution calculation where they get each one of these lines here. And uh, of course that's going to cost you like a thousand times more because you're doing a tenth of a nanometer instead of ten nanometers or something. So it's just something to keep in mind that the atmospheric people have a totally different radiative transfer problem than the underwater people. Yeah. Yeah, and incidentally, in the, in the atmospheric correction that Jeremy talked about, one of the things they do correct for is NO2 because it's an absorbing gas. And just, just like ozone, except ozone's up way up and NO2 tends to be right near the surface because it comes from burning things. So it's industrial power plants, it's uh, forest fires, it's automobile pollution, etc. So they assume the NO2 is right next to the surface, but you still need the concentration of NO2, and they get that from this Skiomaki satellite, which can look at some particular little absorption band, I guess, of NO2 in some way backs out the uh, concentration of NO2, which then Jeremy takes and plugs into his algorithm to correct for NO2. And in this case, it's an absorbing something but they know where it is. It's right next to the surface. Unlike absorbing aerosols, which might be next to the surface, or they might be up at 10 kilometers if they've been blown out by some volcano, and you don't know where they are, but you do reasonably well know where NO2 is. So that's all I wanted to say. And, you know, I have studiously avoided atmospheric radiative transfer for the last 40 years because you know, it's just so different that I just don't have time to deal with it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a real different world. Yeah. Oh, the, the one thing in Hydrolyte that I do actually integrate over is the incident solar irradiance. So when you say, you know, I'm going to do this run, 
and use this RADTRAN model for the solar irradiance and so forth, it's actually at one nanometer resolution. So if you remember, here's, here's the solar irradiance versus wavelength, and it sort of has a general shape like that, but if you look a little closer, there's lots of little dips here that are these Fraunhofer lines and so forth. And there, when you say run hydrolyte from 430 to 440, the first thing I do is go off on the side and I integrate the solar irradiance nanometer by nanometer to get a good averaged value. But then for the IOPs in the water, I just use the midpoint. And that's because I do have to account for those Fraunhofer lines and atmospheric gas absorption lines and all of that. And I do that at one nanometer resolution. Okay.